Voltage File Analysis Suite, or FAS, is a data discovery service available in the AWS public cloud, but can also be deployed in a virtualized manner in a private data center. It's broken down into functional areas for the admin and analyst. As an admin, I can establish what data sources I want to analyze and exactly how I want them to be analyzed in the Connect interface. FAS supports the most common unstructured data sources out of the box to include file shares, SharePoint, Exchange, Google Drive, the O365 platform, as well as things like S3 buckets, Azure Blob Storage, and Documentum is underway. In addition, the file analysis suite has a fully exposed REST API to establish connectors to other data sources. This could include other open text repositories like XCCM and core content. When an admin establishes repositories to analyze, they can define exactly how to scan the repository, including the scan interval, whether OCR or optical character recognition should be performed on image-based formats, what grammar sets should be inspected for for sensitive data, and what type of scan they want to perform. For instance, we have a scan type here of metadata only. This scan provides a quick scan of just the file and repository properties, particularly useful for data cleanup and hygiene use cases. A full content scan provides in-depth analysis for privacy compliance and data lifecycle use cases. And especially useful for large data estates, we can define a repository to be smart scanned, which allows for sampling a data source based on a defined percentage of the total repository to analyze. This allows the analyst to be more prescriptive in terms of where higher concentrations of risky data exist in a short time frame. When we create a repository that's either smart scan or full scan, we can inspect the full text content of all the documents for sensitive data based on grammars. These are grouped by grammar set. We can assign a grammar set to a repository or multiple grammar sets. FAST comes out of the box with grammar sets for specific regulatory requirements. We're looking here at the US Consumer Privacy Grammar Set, and we can see all the grammars or sensitive data that we're inspecting for, along with what region that's, an, that's been assigned to it. Organizations can create their own custom grammar sets to meet their own business needs. We can see here an example for an aerospace manufacturing business and the custom grammars in this particular grammar set. In fact, these custom grammars get established right within the UI as well. If we take a look at that part number, custom grammar that was established, we can see the, the various patterns that were established or regular expressions that were used to define how we're gonna look for anything that fits a part number. Not only that though, we can test and validate that our expressions are working correctly against a set of sample text. Grammar rules can also not just be based on patterns, but also based on a list of terms pertaining to a business's specific needs. Finally, within the Connect interface, we have tags. Tags provide us a way to be able to group and classify content together. If we take a look at one of these tags, we can see that tags allow us to be able to perform searches that include keywords, including full content searching, terms lists, or any additional metadata in a Boolean logic format, including those grammars that we've identified against content. Tags allow us to be able to also group content into reporting groups, so we can filter and search based on contents that are similar by their tag. We also can assign a weighted label that helps to assign or define the level of risk or sensitivity to the content of this particular tag. In this case, we can see it's got a weighted label of low and a color of green. This is out of a, a ranking between zero and 10,000. If we just filter this to the reporting group for aerospace or aircraft and aerospace information, we can see the several tags that have been built out for this particular organization. Out of the box, the solution can automatically build out a series of tags and reporting groups that leverages the built-in set of grammars, like we can see here for contact data, financial data, and government identification data. Let's now hop over and take a look at how these tags and reporting groups, along with all these color codings, are leveraged to present our dashboards within the Analyze portion of the interface. Analyze provides the analyst with a graphical view of your managed enterprise information and lets you search that information. The dashboards help you to identify key trends such as the size of the content under management, 
and the volume of sensitive data as identified by the tags and grammar rules. Let's filter this to those repositories we looked at at the very beginning. And let's adjust this to just the last week's worth of data indexed. We can see the amount of sensitive data versus the total amount of data that's been indexed. We can also see those reporting groups along with the weighted labels that were associated to those reporting groups. Or we can just simply have a view of the weighted labels or the weighted labels as they spread across the various different filtered repositories. Each one of these areas is navigable. And if we want to, let's go ahead and click in on this financial data, highly sensitive set of information. This takes us to our research pane where I can further search and filter on the left here. I can also build out complex searches, much like we saw with the, the build of a tag. But from here, I can preview the documents directly within the browser. This viewing technology allows us to support over 1,500 file formats leveraging idle key view. Notice that this document has a high risk score. This is based on the amount or quantity of sensitive data in relationship to the weighted labels associated to those tags pertaining to that sensitive data. If we scroll further down, we can see the reporting groups that are associated to this document. And if we scroll even further down, we can see the grammar rules that were associated or that were picked up on for this particular document. And if we want to, we can even see the entity that was extracted per grammar rule. And if we select each one of these, it'll hit highlight that within the preview for us. Notice though that we're seeing a masked view. And this is something that you can enable or disable depending on who you're logged in as and what repository you're ask, accessing. This allows us to be able to restrict the level of data that our analysts see when they're researching content. Now that we find content that meets a specific activity, we can send this data to a workspace. And a workspace allows us to be able to collect information that needs to have some type of action performed against it. I've already sent data to a workspace, so let's hop over to the Manage interface now. Inside Manage, we can divvy up our workspaces based on different types of activities that we're going to perform against our content. For instance, we may have ones for sensitive data governance where we're trying to clean up and, and identify PII, PCI, and so forth, versus data cleanup where we're trying to get rid of the redundant, obsolete, and trivial content. But our workspaces are flexible to meet whatever the business requirements may be from performing FOIA and e-discovery type collections to records discovery and collection for processing content into a document management system and so forth. Let's take a look at the sensitive data governance set of workspaces and specifically this workspace for that aerospace manufacturing business. We can see the data sources that have been added to this workspace along with any data subject access request and holds on content that have been applied to this workspace. But we can also divide and conquer the contents of this workspace into workbooks. For instance, we can have a workbook that finds all content with a tag of intellectual property. And then we can assign an activity that perhaps collects this data into the file analysis suite or applies a hold to this data. Or it could even send this content to another location, which could be another file share a SharePoint, or a document and records management system like Documentum, XECM, or Core Content. Maybe if we found content that's no longer needed within the organization, we simply want to delete it. And we can have an activity here to simply delete the contents pertaining perhaps to a legacy data cleanup activity or something where we're processing redundant, obsolete, and trivial data. If we find content that's sensitive, and we're not ready to perhaps send it off to a target location like a document management system, we can call out to our protection activity, which will add a Microsoft purview sensitivity label to protect the file with Microsoft's information protection, which includes digital rights and encryption. Our workbook activities can be custom too. We can create custom activities that we can have right within the UI to perform a wide variety of additional tasks. Perhaps it's to redact all the entities that were found on the file using Brava. Or maybe it's to perform a redaction and then a collection as a FOIA activity along with an audit report and an email notification. These are custom activities you can leverage with the REST API. Another example for us, instead of maybe redacting content, 
Perhaps we want to find the sensitive entities in a file, and we want to encrypt them using format-preserving encryption as opposed to a blacked-out redaction on the file. In summary, the file analysis suite allows us to be able to scan and analyze our unstructured data repositories, identify sensitive data, visualize and search and filter our contents, and perform remediation activities against our data.